Hello and welcome! In today's video I will be showing you the Lightfast results for three different sets of paint that I have and they've been in the window for a year and a month. So yeah, I'm a month late getting them out of the window, but I've been busy. The first set of results we'll be looking at is from the Savoir Faire Gouache set. I received this in a Smart Art subscription box quite a while ago and I'm curious to see how they'll turn out. For this particular gouache, let's take a look. These are the ones that have been in the window and you can see that some of them are very clearly faded. I do have the ones that have been in the drawer right here. We're gonna look at those. These two down here are not the Savoir Faire brand. These are a Windsor & Newton Naples Yellow and a Turner, what is it? A Turner gouache that I didn't write down the color name, but anyway, it's also been in the window the same amount of time, so it'll be fun to look at those. All right, so let's take a look at this side first. We'll move that over there. Okay, so the ones on the bottom have been in the window, and the one on the top came from my drawer over there just now. No chance of that one getting sunlight. This is actually not that bad. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Let me bring them closer for you here. There we are. So there's obvious fading in these three paint colors here. And I would say that's pretty much it for this side. The purple, yeah, the purple's faded, but that's really not too bad. And then it looks like the Windsor & Newton and the Turner gouache didn't fade at all. The Sharpie line faded. <laughs> so Sharpies are not permanently permanent. <laughs> all right, one more run down here. The right hand side has been in the drawer. So these three colors that faded, primary blue, turquoise, and the emerald green. I'm pretty sure that's what those are. I will, in my new swatches, kind of, I start labeling the pigments and stuff since that's obviously good information for you guys to have. But let's take a look at this side because this side's the one that's pretty bad. As we all know, reds like to fade, right? So not too bad until we get to these four and that one. Let me bring them closer for you. I find it interesting that that color that looks like an opera, you know, the most rosy color here, doesn't look like it faded. Isn't that interesting? Okay, here they are up close. The one on the right, obviously, has been in the drawer. So what is that one? We've got a carmine red that faded, a primary red that faded, the magenta did not, the vermilion faded, bright orange faded, and can the, I think that yellow mostly looks the same in the gradient. You, we did lose some pigment in the gradient, and that is the lemon yellow, and the primary yellow is practically gone, but it looks like the white survived and the black looks great. So I don't know if these have actual pigment information on them. Let me pull them out and look real quick. Let's just look at this carmine red, for example. No, no pigment information on it, just a color name. Well, if you have this set of gouache, then those are the fading colors for you to reference. Again, this has been one year and a month in full sunlight for lots and lots of hours every day. And I guess if you just replace some of these reds with this Turner red, <laughs> you'll be set. I'm gonna go ahead and put these back in the window and these back in the drawer because I do have room for them. We can check on them again in another year and see if there's anything left. The next set of results are these Paul Rubens student grade paints. Now they came in tubes and I just poured them in here. So this is what I have in my palette drawer over there. I do still have all the tubes of course, but this is what I pulled out to show you guys. The Paul Rubens student grade paints. I received the entire box of these. I think it was only $8, which is why I bought them. And there are 18 colors here. The bottom half of this one is some of the paints in this homemade paint tin here. So we don't need to look at those yet. I mean, you can obviously see that they're there, but I just want you to know that the student grade ones are this strip and the top part of this strip. So let me turn this over so the gradient's going in the same direction. We'll look at this first strip. Hmm, very impressive, you guys. Very impressive. Let me just put this down here for you. So sometimes the camera sees fading that I don't see in person, so I'm trying to look through the camera screen up there and see 
what I can see, but I don't see fading just looking down at the strips. Let's pull them closer to the camera and see what the camera sees. So obviously the Sharpie line faded. So you can't look at that. The Sharpie line is not part of the test, obviously. Just look at the paint colors. Okay, so in the camera, the gradient on these two oranges looks lighter. It does not look lighter in person except for this little corner right here. So when I say in person, I just mean with my human eyes, not the camera eyes. So the rest looks fine. So on camera, this purple gradient looks like it has faded, but I don't see that just looking at it, not through the camera screen. Hmm. And the colors look vibrant and pretty, so maybe you guys could get away with using the Paul Rubin student grade paints. All right, let's do this one. Lost which ones are in the window. See when they're, when they don't fade, it's hard to tell. Okay, so the left side is the one that's been in the window. Look at that, except for the Sharpie lines, no fading. Not by the human eye. Let's bring them up close to the camera and see if the camera sees anything. I don't think so. They look the same. Wow, a whole year and no fading. And these are their student grade paints and the tubes were big and it was $8 at the time. Well, I will find these paint links again and link them down below for you because they were fun to use. I don't know, let me see how they re-wet. I don't have water. Let's just spray some water out. I am not prepared for this. All right, spray some water out so I can wet the brush here. Uh, it's not very much wet. And let's see how like this blue re-wets. Pretty darn easily, okay. Well, we may have to pull these out and use them again. Lastly, we'll be taking a look at this cute little tin of paints. This was a gift by one of you to me. I really appreciate it. So there are some handmade paints in here by different brands, and there's also some Da Vinci, Daniel Smith, and Van Gogh paints in here that we have in the window. Now the whole top row is pretty much the handmade paints by different companies. And in that video, which I will link for you, hopefully in the corner and down below, I explained to you that the brands that she told me these probably are, I think some were Soliloquy and others, and then the ones down here are Van Gogh and Da Vinci and all of that, and I do have them labeled on the back here. So on the bottom, let's start with the bottom of this one. We have the Daniel Smith Rhodonite Genuine and the Quinacridone Coral, which is a beautiful color that I love. So let's put those side by side. Those are the two Daniel Smith ones here and here. And the Rhodonite Genuine did, I was gonna say it faded. It, it didn't really fade. It very subtly color shifted. So some orange is coming out in the color now on the side that's been in the window. It's a little bit orange tinted. It's just tiny bit more than the side that's been in the drawer. And then the Quinacridone Coral, Boy, it's hard to tell because that faded Sharpie line kind of messes my eyes up here. Let's get these real close. I don't think they faded at all. I don't think that quinacridone coral faded. Uh, maybe in the camera this gradient looks a little lighter. What do you guys think? It's hard to tell. Okay, the bottom three are the Da Vinci ones. Ultramarine blue violet, Prussian blue green, and the Naples yellow deep. So these are three Da Vinci colors. And I would say no change. You might say on the camera that this ultramarine blue violet has faded in the gradient, but strangely enough, I'm seeing no fading just looking at it with the human eye. I only see that it looks lighter in the camera screen. Interesting how different the camera picks up color than the human eye. So maybe it is faded a little in the gradient, but I mean it is according to the camera, but according to my human eye, no, not faded. Okay, so the rest of the homemade tin, we have Van Gogh paints then from the pink down. So let's look at the pink down. These are all Van Gogh colors and you can tell that they are the dusk yellow and the dusk green, all those beautiful colors. What else? Uh, dusk violet, dusk pink, and 
quinacridone rose. So the top one where we're starting, the Van Gogh, is the Quin Rose, and it did color change a little bit. So while it doesn't look like it faded, it is shifting color, which is funny because it doesn't look like the camera showing that, but I can see in person, again, the one that's been in the drawer is more pink, and the one that's been exposed to light, some orange tint is coming through there. So interestingly enough, in person, I'm assuming this one here is the Dusk Yellow, and there is a color difference between the two sides that I can see in person, not just on camera. And the gradient is ever so slightly lighter in person than this side. So some of the green tint, or the yellow tint, I guess if you want to call it that, is fading out of the side that's on the window. But this is a year, and a year and a month of full sunlight, so that's pretty interesting. Not too bad, guys. The remaining three to my human eye look completely unchanged which is good because I love these colors. I think they're beautiful and it's fun to know that I can use them without worrying too much about it. And these, these top two obviously you may not want to use in a painting that's going to hang in a lot of sunshine, but we also don't hang our paintings in direct sunshine usually, right? Maybe they're in direct sunlight if they're near a window for a couple of hours, but not the hours and hours that the rest of these are. Okay, for the rest of these, we have a mint shimmer, an indigo, so we have a, a Pazuli Red, that's the top one. The indigo definitely faded. I can see that with my human eye and in the camera screen. That Kaput Mortum looks completely unchanged. Really ironic because I thought this one faded a lot, but now that I pull the one out of the drawer, it just goes on like that. That's a potter's pink here. So it's just granulating like that to start with, like potter's pinks are. This one here uh, is labeled a anorthosite, okay, and it did fade. See, dang those Sharpie lines there, messing with my eyes. I actually don't think that faded at all. I think that it's perfectly matched to the other side. What do you guys think? And then this last one is called Glow, and it didn't fade either. I'm gonna have to not use those Sharpie lines anymore because that's messing with me. <laughs> I do have the some of these sheets ready to go for this Windsor & Newton Cotman set that I received from one of you. And this is not Sharpie, it's the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. So it'll be interesting to see if that fades, because I'm not going to redo this without the lines, we'll just see what happens. But these were Sharpie lines. So overall, I am extremely impressed with all of these results. I mean, even the gouache didn't do too bad, except those four colors, so... That is not what I expected. Oh, I guess five colors. I forgot about that yellow down there. But for a super affordable set of gouache, cool. And the student grade paints from Paul Rubens? Okay, everything that Paul Rubens puts out, I am pretty darn impressed with. And I do want to play with that goose eye paint again some more from that one video. There's so many things I still want to play with, but here we are, a year and a month later. I'm gonna put all of them back in the window and back in the drawer, and we'll just keep checking up on things. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. The first results I have are from the Savoir for the Savoir Faire. Oh. If you couldn't tell that, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> well, if you have, hang on, hang on. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> what are you doing, Jack? What are you doing, Jack? What are you doing, Jack? <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> that became the best one here. The one in the art room is too. Ours. That's all right. That thing was served its last days because the they don't make refills for them for some reason. <laughs> yeah, the one in the art room will keep them busy. Until he tires himself out and takes a nap. <laughs> 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 <laughs>